The CMHC and the OSFI, they're all corrupt, and I'm going to show you how they are in this video. So CMHC CEO defends $12,000 bonuses for employees, and this is back in 2022. But I wanted to show you this just to illustrate a point. So the CMHC prides itself on making housing more affordable, yet the CEO is paid $459,000 plus benefits. Just think about that for a second. And whilst you think about that, I'm going to show you this. Let's take a look at her past. So this is Romy Boas, president and CEO of CMHC, which is essentially owned by the government, but kind of acts like a corporation with its own president and CEO and saying, we're helping you afford a home through things like their mortgage insurance program, which just creates massive moral hazard in lending. Prior to joining CMHC, Romy had a diverse first career in the Canadian banking industry, including 12 years with the Bank of Montreal, where she gained extensive experience in treasury operations and risk management. So once again, just like the OSFI yesterday, we're talking about ex-bankers. Ex-bankers run the show here. The OSFI, the regulator, the CMHC, the people who are supposedly helping you buy a home are run by ex-bankers and they are paid handsomely for it too. This is your tax dollars hard at work in Canada, making things more unaffordable for you. It's unbelievable that Canadians can't see or understand what's going on right below their noses. Because even if you go through the CMHC's corporate plan, it sounds a lot like a private company, but it's owned by you, the taxpayer. So first of all, we are accountable to the parliament through the minister of, for CMHC, currently the minister of housing and diversity and inclusion. We report on progress against against our plan through our quarterly financial reports and our annual report. So what is their corporate plan? So people in core housing need to have equitable and reliable access to housing that is secure and affordable. I mean, go to any downtown in your city and you'll see homeless people everywhere. This is not a common occurrence if you travel outside of North America, the United States and Canada. It's just not a common thing. So obviously they're doing a great job. I'm really thankful that we have this this company, this publicly owned weird company full of bank executives or ex-bank executives, might I add. Just absolutely hilarious. So Canada has the number of homes and mix of housing options to serve diverse needs. I love the tone they're talking about. It really goes with that woke agenda. Uh, Canada's housing system supports sustainability and stability. <laughs> I mean, that is just absolutely hilarious to you and me, isn't it? Because when you look at the amount of mortgage debt, is that something of stability? I mean, if we go back to this, this just goes to show you. So economic slowdown to wipe 1.6 trillion from Canadian paper wealth, mostly from home values. That was in October 2022 from RBC. Is that really a stable housing market? Is the CMHC really doing their job? I mean, all you have to do is put yourself in the shoes of a lender and think, okay, I'm the lender, I can buy insurance, which is funded by the taxpayer, and I can charge the person borrowing for it. Do I give a shit about the lending quality, the lending standards, essentially, do I care? And the answer is no, because if they default, it's on the CMHC's dime. And if they default to a private mortgage insurance company, it's on their dime. Maybe the Ontario Teachers Pension Plan in the case of Canada Guarantee. This has just created huge moral hazard within lending because these mortgage insurers, what they essentially do is take the risk away from the lender, at least the perceived risk. Obviously, me and you know that there is actually a lot more risk there than people might think. When you're talking about 1.6 trillion being wiped off Canadians' wealth, I mean, that is nothing stable, is it? And this has been created through bad lending. You don't become the fourth most indebted country in the world in terms of your household, that doesn't happen without bad lending, without poor lending standards, without fraud. You know, all these different components, they contribute towards that. And, you know, Canadians need to open their eyes and realize that, hey, you don't get to this point of being this indebted without bad lending standards and without a lot of fraud, a lot of moral hazard, which has been created by prior bailouts like the IMPP in 2008. I mean, that just set a precedent to the banks that they can just essentially 
essentially do what they want and there's no risk because the taxpayer is going to back them up. Obviously, this has got so insanely large now, private debt and household debt, that we know the taxpayer wouldn't be able to even cover all the losses for that. So when it does implode, they're going to have to take a lot of those losses. That's going to lead to tight lending for a long time. It could even be past a decade. I saw that in my home country in the UK after 2008. It's going to be a total disaster. And if we go over to the OSFI, you know, I showed you this yesterday, but once again, comparing this to the CMHC guy, you know, this guy's from National Bank. You know, <laughs> he worked as a bank executive at National Bank. So can we really trust him? Can we trust him to go and regulate the banks? Do you not think he's got relationships with these banks? Do you not think he's going to think from the bank CEO standpoint and think, you know, this would actually make things better for the bank? You know, there's just so many different things. And obviously, he's not independent. He's going to have relationships. And that causes a massive conflict of interest. But the whole system is corrupt from start to finish. You know, government is in bed with the bank regulators, with the CMHC, obviously, and the banks. They're all in bed together. The elephant in the room. And now I wanted to show you this because this will just make you laugh. So since 2004, Rate Spy has been tracking all the different things that CMHC and OSFI have done, basically with regards to mortgage lending. And you can see this goes on and on and on. There's just so many different things. I mean, you can look at this on your own time and I'll leave a link in the description. But you can see here, I just want to point to this in 2006. This was around the period 2004 to 2006, where the lending just exploded. When you look at this, you'll, you'll now realize what I'm talking about. So if we go back to around 2004, you know, between around here, 2003, 2005, this area here was really where it started to go parabolic. And you just see the line is going up at a steady pace. And then all of a sudden, it just starts going parabolic to the point where you had that real blow off top, which was around 2019 and into 2021 and 2020 and all those different things, which we know about in the bubble phase. That's the new paradigm phase. Well, I want to take you to this to just kind of show you how this was built up. So the CMHC announces a four month pilot program to begin insuring mortgages with 30 year amortizations. Previously, only 25 year amortizations could be insured. And then they beef that up to 35 years. And then they go even higher with 40 years in 2006. So is that going to make it any more affordable for the average home buyer to go and buy a house? No, because what, what the CMHC does is they just contributed massively during this bubble's rise to the increase in demand, the increase in the amount of lending, the available credit because of the moral hazard created by themselves. The CMHC, I'm, what I'm trying to say in this video is the CMHC and the OSFI, they are part of the reason that housing prices are well over a million dollars in places like Toronto and Vancouver. They are the reason in a lot of cases because they did allow this thing to start the massive rampant lending. It would not be the same if these banks had to adhere to proper lending standards, which they don't because of the moral hazard created by private mortgage insurance. If you remove the private mortgage insurance, if you remove CDIC as well, then the banks actually have to compete. The banks actually have to be prudent when they're lending. But with all these different things in, in place, what happens? It just causes moral hazard, doesn't it? And who pays for all the problems. It's it's me and it's you who pay. I mean, in the case of CDIC, that is not the banks covering that. That is the taxpayer footing that bill. And yes, of course, the banks pay into it, but that is you paying into it through your banking fees and all the nickel and diming the bank does to you. So you're paying for that. And you know, it just creates this huge moral hazard, which is evident everywhere within the banking system. And it's kind of funny because people say, you know, this is the most stable banking system in the world. But we know that not to be the case, especially when you've got the amount of GDP that you have as an entire country, and you've got mortgage debt surpassing that you've got private debt surpassing that those aren't things that happen in a stable country. Having the fourth highest household debt in the world is not something that happens in a stable country. And I think it's only when you sort of travel and broaden your mind and you've been to other countries, you've seen things play out in different places like I have in the UK 
where you can really see what's coming here in Canada, which is mostly impossible for Canadians to see, for the 90% of Canadians to see. And I know a lot of you on this channel, you can see what's coming clearly. We are just a minority, I would like to highlight on this channel, a minority which I love, by the way. So anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, you might like this video here. You might also like that video there. I want to thank you so much for watching. Sign up to the free email list in the description. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.